Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to July 2022, July the 1st, to Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry, Peace in the Valley, Lutheran Church, LCMS Congregation, from Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America. But coming to you this morning from my study in Oro Valley, Arizona, near Tucson. And I'm Pastor Ron York of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church. And it is so good to be able to welcome you this morning, as always, worldwide, no matter where you may be. Coming to you a little early this morning because I got people outside. <laughs> and, and I thought I could beat them before they start doing work. So it doesn't look like I'm going to. But thank you again for the accommodation. I appreciate it. So good to be able to be with you this morning on a brand new month, July 2022. And uh, brothers and sisters, as we come to this new month, our devotional is going to be talking on the subject of reflections in July. And we've got a lot to reflect upon. And so I pray that that's going to bless us and inspire us, encourage us and give us genuine real peace this morning as we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices, and in the morning we prepare a sacrifice for you, and we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. So, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So the passage of scripture that I'm going to share with you comes from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, and it's in, in Acts uh, chapter 22, beginning in verse 12. And this is the account where Saul, who became St. Paul, has this audience with Ananias. Uh, Saul had an uh, audience with Jesus Christ, the the in, the the the, the uh, Jesus Christ, God Almighty, uh, met him on the road to Damascus. And uh, Jesus enlisted St. Paul to be the minister to the Gentiles at that audience. And uh, St. Paul was persecuting Jesus in his church. And he was uh, kill, uh, approving of the killing of them. He was rounding them up the early uh, believers in Christ, and killing them. And he thought he was doing God a tremendous uh, favor, a tremendous service. And in, and in essence, he was not. And so, but he, he as a result of seeing Jesus, he, he, he was blind. He had scales that were put upon him. And he was directed to Ananias in Damascus. And when Ananias spoke the words of Jesus to him, he was miraculously healed of his blindness. And so now we have this account of the reflections that St. Paul had with Jesus Christ, and he's being um, counseled by Ananias. And so we pick this up at this particular point. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me. And this is St. Paul speaking. And standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, and his, his, his name was Saul first, receive your sight. And at that very hour, I received my sight and saw him. And he said, the God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, which was Jesus Christ, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you wait? Now listen. Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Now that's the power of the sacramental ministry. Notice what Ananias said. He said, rise, be baptized, and wash away your sins. Yet we've got Christian denominations that don't believe that. 
and they really think they're Christian. I would argue to the contrary. So, if, if you don't believe in the sacramental ministry and the miraculous of Jesus Christ and God Almighty, then, then you don't believe in uh, the uh, uh, virgin birth either. And if you don't believe that, you're damned. It's the same miracle. The same miracle of the virgin birth is also the same miracle in holy baptism and holy communion, washing away your sins. Well, baptism washes away your sins. Holy communion, you get the body and blood, the actual body and blood of Jesus in with and under bread and wine for the sole purpose of forgiveness of sins. And if you don't believe any of that, you're damned. It doesn't care what your denomination says. It doesn't care what you believe, what your philosophy is, what your viewpoint is, or what your opinion is. Okay? Straight up. So, I can't answer those things for you, brothers and sisters, but this is serious stuff. I mean, it's right there. I just read it to you. Ananias says, well, why are you waiting? Rise, be baptized, wash away your sins. So how can you take these things from Scripture and then say, well, it doesn't really mean that? Really? Like you're a theologian? <laughs> Most critics of the Bible are not theologians, so you know how much they know about theology? Nothing. Yet they're going to expound on that and think that they're real big critics. So let's see what our devotional has to say. This is part of the reflections of July. It says the this halfway point in the year offers an opportunity to reflect on the gifts that God has given to his children. See, we're right in the midpoint of 2022. And so, and, and, and the writer, our devotional writer, is very, very right. It's a good time to stop and reflect on the gifts that God gives to us. He gives us holy baptism. He gives us holy communion. He gives us word and sacrament ministry. Why? <laughs> For the forgiveness of our sins, brothers and sisters. So that you don't have to worry about dying you don't have to worry about being condemned because your sins have been forgiven. In, with, and under bread and wine. Word and sacrament ministry. And God gives it to you. It's miraculous. So the gift of the Savior born in a manger, the gift of salvation through that Savior's life, death, and resurrection, at the very core of this month's reflection is the reality that our loving God has thoughts and plans that are greater than anything we can want, ask for, or imagine. He had a plan for Saul, who became St. Paul. He's got a plan for you. Jeremiah chapter 28, which is my favorite passage in Scripture, says, God has a plan for your life. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Why? To give you a future and a hope. And you know what he's doing? He's working out that plan in your life every day. All right? So reflections in July can help us to remember that our life has been guided and molded by God, even when we may not see his hand at work in the moments, days, or months. Our sinful nature will always cloud our reflections. Isaiah reminds us of the truth of God's loving plan. While our reflections are limited, more important is that God sees us through Jesus, in whom we've been redeemed, we've been bought back. That is the core truth that should frame all of our reflections. And it should. But here's the other component. All this is but by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, with no merits from us at all. Or no contributions from us at all. In any way, shape, or form. That includes so-called decisions, accepting Christ, which is nonsense. It's not even taught in the Bible and all this other malarkey. 
All right? But it's all grace. You do nothing, God does everything. However, that does not give you a license to go and commit willful <laughs> sin and just do whatever you want to do. God expects you to live your life in accordance with his commandments. Ten of them. Okay? So that is the core truth that should frame all of our reflections. No matter what has happened in the past, Jesus' saving work brings comfort far beyond anything that you could imagine. That's a fact. So I pray that you'll be blessed, inspired, and, and excited about that. And so let me pray. So dear Jesus, please help us to see your thoughts and ways in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks be to God, brothers and sisters. I pray that will bless you tremendously. So my brothers and sisters, Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so now we want to profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for chiming in this morning worldwide, no matter where you may be chiming in from. It is so much appreciated, and we are so thankful for that. I pray that you found our uh, ministry to be a blessing to you, an inspiration, and above all, a source of real genuine peace for you as well. And so uh, it's a beautiful day again in southern Arizona, and uh, Good day for flying, so the flaps have been retracted, and so have the wheels. And so, brothers and sisters, go out and enjoy the blessings of our Lord in abundance. I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies.